بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته peace be with you and welcome uh, and thank you for the welcome also to this gathering this opportunity to meet the Muslim community and non-Muslim community in Houston. I have been given an opportunity to speak <coughs> and I chose my subject uh, tonight to be Islam, the future of mankind. I'd like to just say first um, that I remember a similar gathering actually <coughs> in London recently there was uh, the appointment of a new religious editor to one of the TV channel uh, stations, Channel 4. And we were invited, Muslims were invited, uh, Church of England, priests were invited, Catholics, uh, Jews, Buddhists, Hindus, all invited to this kind of gathering in the Savoy. And I ended up on a table with uh, just some of the uh, uh, directors of, of this uh, TV AM, this channel. And one of the directors said, wow, isn't this great? You know, all these different religions all here together and sitting down. Wonder what would happen in 500 years' time. What he was meaning was, you know, perhaps all the differences might disappear. I said, look, one thing's for certain, if we're still here in 500 years' time, we'll all still be human. That won't change. We'll all still be able to sit down together, have a meal together. That won't change. But people's perception of the objective of life, those things will always remain differences. People will not necessarily see eye to eye on the purpose why we are here. But to live together, that's our duty. To be good neighbors, that's our duty. But to have exactly the same opinion even uh, as we see in the Muslim world, <laughs> it's impossible. So we should do our best to treat each other with generosity and respect, but understanding the reality that this kind of idea that all oh, one day we'll all be one kind of soup <laughs> is impossible, and we should accept that reality. So this brings me on to my theme, Islam, the future of mankind. And this, of course, will be presenting the view of the future as perceived by Islam. So, first of all, we ask the question, what do we mean by the future? What do we mean when we say the future? For majority of people in this world today, the future is concerned with this life. It's concerned with an idea that humanity is evolving still. That we are progressing in our humanity. Actually, they mean that we are progressing in our uh, ability to harness technology, resources of the earth. That's what they mean. This is what they mean when they say the progression of humanity. And people have an idea that we are going somewhere. 
But you ask them, where are we going? And they have no idea. But they say, we are going somewhere and we're getting better. It's better than yesterday. Most people have this idea that we are going somewhere and we're progressing. But when you ask them about, well, what about after death? Regardless of humanity, what about you? After you die, what beyond there? Then there's a blank. I said, well, nothing. I'm just one of the little cogs in this machine called humanity. When I go, you know, someone will replace me, but there's nothing for most people after death. Or they have very little knowledge. Because of that uh, attitude, we have an imbalance in the world. An imbalance, because when people only start thinking that this is the only life, that there is nothing beyond this earth, then they start grabbing it, start uh, becoming greedy for it. Because for them, there is nothing else except this earth. And therefore, they try their best to obtain everything that they can in their lifetime regardless of the consequences of their children or future generations. We see today that the medical advances which are taking place, what is motivating all this medical advancement? Trying to stay alive longer. That's the basic philosophy of a man who was once called countryman in Jamaica. A very kind of uh, rough and ready Rastafarian type figure uh, called Countryman, used to live on the beach with his wife and children. He was once asked, what do you think the objective of life is? He says, to stay alive as long as you can, man. <laughs> that was his idea. And that is most people's idea. But when it comes to beyond the grave, beyond this life, many people are unaware. So, I'd like to read some verses or a verse or two from the Quran in relation to this regarding the attitude of most people who have very little knowledge about what is after this life, what is waiting for them. Inshallah, I'll try to recite in Arabic and that's why our brothers are here to correct me if I do something wrong, uh, if I miss anything, then Inshallah the brothers will correct me. Uh, and I will also then read the English translation. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Afara'ayta man ittakhada illahahu hawahu وَأَدَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى عِلْمٍ وَخَتَمَ عَلَى سَمِعِهِ وقبل وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعَلَ عَلَى بَصَرِهِ غِشَاوَةٌ فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ وَقَالُوا مَا هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا يُهْلِكُنَا إِلَّا الدَّهْرِ مَا لَهُمْ بِذَلِكَ مِنْ عِلْمٍ إِنْ هُمْ إِلَّا يَظُنُّونَ صدق الله العظيم Translation of this. Hast thou seen him who makes his desire his God? 